what's going on it is solo e and in this video i'm basically be showing you liquidity grabs fibonacci and how to use this while you're scalping set it up as an entry day we're going to look at the daily four hour and then also scale down to like the 15 minute and also the five minute trading s p 500 so first and foremost before we get started if you guys want my free pdf book all i want you guys to do is go ahead and like the video and also comment down below and say please let me get that ebook or drop a fire emoji or drop any comment so we can keep the algorithm liking our videos and we can keep it in the high demand now that being said let's go ahead and get more into the strategy like i said this pdf is a little bit more details on everything here but we're gonna go ahead and dive into it let's do it all right so first let's talk about what liquidity means to me and how i'm gonna break it down to you guys so liquidity is basically a settlement in a market where smart money is using sellers and buyers to leverage their accounts and to leverage their money so what this basically looks like as far as a visualization picture artwork is just look at a swimming pool full of dollar signs and the fishing rod and the fishing hook is the smart money coming in there to trap you well, first they already trapped you in that swimming pool but they're coming in there to pick up each fish which is known as dollar signs so what is happening in the market is the smart money the big dogs the big guys they create these areas of interest where there's a lot of liquidity rest in there and they wait on sellers and buyers like retail traders like us to come into these positions take our buys take ourselves and basically just trap ourselves in the swimming pool here and we we're thinking we're going to win this but in reality we're not and this is where stop hunts come at this is where buy sell stops all of this stuff that we see when you get stopped out major wick and the market goes all in your favor so I'm going to be showing you guys how I like to take these trades and get into these trades without worrying about any of that. All right. So right now we're looking at S&P 500 and I did cherry pick this, but this is not to show you anything else, but how to really strategize this and use this when you decide to trade it, because this is how I really do it. So when I look at any time frame, my main focus is the four hour and or the daily within the four hour and or the daily time frame, what I am mainly trying to focus on is where is this direction? Where are we heading? Are we going up? Are we going down or are we going sideways? After I determine that, that is my only attention that I literally grab from these higher time frames. Another thing that I do like to do mainly from the four hour going into the one hour is I'm looking for these settlements known as POI levels, the demand, the supply levels, and so forth. Now, let's say that you're trading a Forex pair and you're on a four hour scale and you're more so dealing with a market reaction that's just bouncing up, bouncing down, bouncing up off of structure like resistance or support. Well, when it comes to a situation like that, yes, the four hour and even the one hour and also even a daily can come in hand to also look for the supply demand levels and key levels. However, as a scalper, my main focus is to focus in the moment and not to focus outside of something that could happen a week from now or four days from now. Let's just focus on what's going on from now. So what I mean by that is if this is what we've seen on a four hour scale and we're here, then ideally in my eyes, one or two things is going to happen. Either it's going to take out the highs or either it's going to reject it and bounce down. So my question is, what should we do? Well, this is where you have to create what we call a system, a strategy, and you have to implement this. Do you trade when market reach the supply demand level? Do you trade when market reach support and resistance? Or would you wait for market to break that support resistance level before you get in the trade? Meaning, would you wait for it to take liquidity out before you get in the trade? And that is exactly what we're going to do. So if I'm seeing multiple hits rather if this even if, even if this is the four hour or the one hour or the 15 minute or even a five minute in any other time frame i am not going to sell it or buy it just because it had hit a support resistance i am going to tell myself that before we get in this trade i needed to grab liquidity because this goes right back to what i was saying earlier of how the smart money guys they see a pool of money 
So as a retail trader, we trade resistance and support. We trade off of structure. We get last minute data, meaning the move had already happened. So we obviously see it's going up. But while we're trading like that, the smart money guys, they're creating these plays. So they know that sellers and buyers are putting money here. So regardless, even if, and this is why I say, if you trade only support and resistance and only that, you, you probably overall is going to be like this. Your account will probably be like this, right? It will probably be at a break even at the end of the year because it's always a 50 50. Sometimes the market may just bounce down and actually react off it. Sometimes it may go up and then bounce down. It's always 50 50. So you will never be sure if that's all you trade is just resistance and support. No other type of confluences. I'm sure you're going to be 50 50 or lose more. So what we want to do is to feel more comfortable in this setup. I want to see it actually take this pool of money because once again, this is all the dollar signs right here that I'm seeing right here that I'm seeing right here that I'm seeing and I'm seeing the big smart money, right? They're grabbing their fishing rod, right? And they're basically coming down here and looking to hook it, right? So we're going to do like a little seat. They're looking to hook this. So what that essentially could mean for us is we're waiting on that play known as a whack off play. And if we were to look at this as far as even inducement, or if we, if we were to look at this as far as just a simple whack off play where this is considered as an up thrust, which is usually that final move before it drops and create the last point of supply, which is here, then we can be ready for that move. Also, this can be seen as a head and shoulders pattern too. So that ideally is all we're looking for when it comes to these strategies. So if I'm on a four hour scale and I'm telling myself that, all right, four hour scale, I see right here, we're going up. That's all I need to know. So then now I jump on a one hour scale and I'm going to start being more detailed as far as where exactly could this market pull back to because we're going up at the end of the day, right? We created a high and we're creating a new high and possibly create a new high. We create a new low, possibly another low. Where can we head to? So if I'm looking at this, my question is, where's my most recent range? I talk about this all the time in our VIP, where we talk about what range is what, what range you should focus on. There's two ranges that we're focusing on, this one and this one. So I'm asking myself, all right, if market was to pull past this low here, this doesn't mean that it is a downtrend. This just means it's just coming further down in a bigger pool to go further up. But if we can rely off of this not breaking through, then we can possibly hit some areas over here as this can also be a great order block level inducement um also it can be our fair value gap and balance level so we're interested in this so now that i understand just a simple basic way of where i pull back and how far i can go i can even add more sauce to it now me adding more sauce to it is adding my fibonacci so in order for me to add my fibonacci i need to ask myself what is the most recent range from this pullback meaning like all right we had this range here right and we also had this range here but my next question is what is the most recent range from this pullback and that would be just this and this so if i was to take out my fibs and draw it from a to b all of my red levels are my target levels of where market could possibly reverse or possibly create a new low or new high so now seeing that i got this descriptive in this i'm just simply going to now jump straight to the five minute because now on a five minute, all I'm waiting for is just a simple move that breaks up, breaks the previous high, pulls back down and then enter. And then if you want to get more advanced, you can even wait for market to create that new high, break through, and then you can do a buy stop right there and just take it all the way to the top. So let's say we decide to get in this trade, right? So let's say we got the new high, that new high just formed right here. We can now enter off a buy stop. So if you want to enter off a buy stop, it's way more risky, but it is possible. You can even put your stop loss here, stop loss here, and then you can just ride this all the way up to the top. Or if you want to feel even safer for this, you can wait on a pullback. Now, the benefit of waiting on a pullback is you will have more safety and more security that this trade will go in your favor. But the con about it is this move can happen and it can just go completely all the way up. And you just missed out on half of the money here and you're like damn now i gotta figure out a way to get in this market because i just missed a beautiful setup so let's just say that now you're like all right look i want to go ahead and enter off of this trade right so you want to long it maybe here because you see that this is a setup you see that this was the last move to break this liquidity lows here so you're like you know what i'll take this trade 
So this might be your entry, right? Let's just say this was your entry. Let's say TP1 looks like it might have had smash, which would have been right there. And then as you see, we immediately went left, right? So that's the downfall about the breakout. If you're trading on a smaller scale and you're looking for these small setups, you gotta be careful of that because that happens a lot. But as you see, we're still pulling back, right? We're still pulling back, we're still pulling back. And then also around this time is not the time I will be trading S&P or anything like that. It will mainly be London, New York, which is, as you see these highlights right here, this is London, New York, New York. So I mainly trade around these times, but the end goal here is I just want you guys to see the setup that we're looking for overall. So as you see right now, this is kind of the time where I would love to be hopefully looking for some setups. So immediately right during the open of London, New York, we have a beautiful buy setup right here. Well, now we can go ahead and enter and then we can go ahead and take this trade and we can I always suggest to do multiple TPs because that plays a big role. But either way it goes, this one still went left, right? What we're getting at here is the goal that you want to make sure you map out while you're looking at this is one, you want to wait on the breaker structure, right? Because that identifies that this trend is going up. Two, you also want to wait on that pullback. And then when you wait on that pullback, that's when you can get in your setup. When you're trading any indices or anything like that, it is best to do the 15 minute. When you're trading Forex, like GU, EU, AU, anything like that, five minute, I highly suggest because the five minute is a very, very dominant dominant time to enter mainly for me when i'm always trading i'm always usually 15 minute time frame just because how i like to look for my setups and how i like to enter if i know i'm doing a buy stop i go for a little bit wider stop loss right and then i enter off a five minute because i want to be in and out and that's these moves right here so if i was to do a buy stop this would have been my move if I, if I was to do something like this i would have been on a 15 minute and we'd be looking for those setups so when we come, when it comes to time zones and when it comes to entries, that does play a role depending on what you're trading and depending on how you're looking at it. So if you are looking into liquidity grabs, liquidity phases, it is best to wait on structure to break through a major liquidity pool or a major liquidity zone like this, multiple wicks, multiple hits. That's what you're looking for. And then once that happens, you wait on it to pull back into another inducement and balance pair of fear value gap area from that range. And then that's when you can enter. So if we were to look at a 15 minute time frame, the only areas that my interest would have been here, this would have been my midpoint and down here would have been my extreme. And then seeing this setup right here on a 15 minute, obviously the 15 minute would have gave us a better play. We could have entered off here. We definitely would have had took a loss or we could have waited on here and we definitely took a win. Either way it goes, this is how i look for setups right regardless if it's a win or lose you're not gonna fucking win every trade and i hate that we have to train ourselves to assume that we need to win every trade and this is why 99 percent of traders fail and can never really be successful in trading and they consider trading as a scam because of, they just not gonna see it and that's why i say every little thing matters right so that being said if you guys want more content like this definitely drop it down below if you guys want to tap into coinex which is the broker i am using to trade with meta quotes you can definitely do that mt4 mt5 other than that i appreciate the love and support with boy solo i'll see you in my next video peace